Hello, Anshul, yeah. and hello, Samudra. Hey, all right, let's get started. So I scheduled it for 15 minutes to do sort of the uh, typical stand-up for Agile, and the, the goal is to figure out, um, usually, for these sorts of meetings, uh, so what did you do in the past uh, section? So we're going to try this weekly, even though this is supposed to be a daily stand-up meeting, uh, if you follow the whole Agile philosophy. Uh, but I think once a week will do for us. So what did you get done in the last week? What are we going to do over the next week? So we're just going to handle it a week as a time to to solve the, uh, you know, solve all the, the problems for the, the goals for August. And then if you have an obstacle, something that's stopping you from doing any of the work that you want to do, then the, my job is to address it to the best of my ability. So I'm here to remove obstacles and provide resources. Uh, and also my technical goal is to, to be the person that helps verify and validate the design, um, you know, in the lab here in San Diego or the one in Florida. Uh, so now this is, so my obstacle is not knowing what the heck I'm doing um, and taking code bases from different places that might be for different uh, chips and get them working, um, you know, with out of date skills. So, so that's my obstacle, but I'm, I'm working hard to, to try to fix it. Um, so anyway, let's let's go ahead and kick it off. So Andre, if you you'd like to tell us, uh, bring us up to date on what you've accomplished and what you plan on doing and what obstacles you have. Um, so, I haven't been doing any specifics. Uh, I've been kind of following, so I uh, yeah, <laughs> I can help. Yeah, sorry, I muted myself when I turned it over. <laughs> no, you have a speak repository with the. Um, yeah, uh, there's some polyphase filter bank stuff, which we absolutely need. Um, no, I mean, I haven't done specifically anything in the past week or so, or uh, actually in the past. Anyways, never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, yeah, so, no, I understand. Uh, the agenda is a little bit, it'll work going forward <laughs> when it's weekly, but I like, know. so you'll have to bring us up to date with what you've contributed, which is a lot, uh, but it might not have been in the past week. Um, could I uh, could I just uh, uh, um, just uh, uh, request Andre uh, if you could uh, give a top down uh, description that might help because I'm new but I, I can pick up very quickly. Um, I had I had some help but I basically I, I worked on the, the DVP uh, encoder or yeah the transmitter part and on RCL basically HDL stuff and. So things I, I want to do is the license stuff I have uh, so, sort of stashed, like paused. I need to update those and um, yeah, the licenses and the references and stuff like that. That's basically it that I have pending. I, I can send the link to the repository. And, um, is it Haki you, you pronounce? Um, actually, um, I'm N3RDX, call sign, uh, Shamudra Hawk. Last name is Hawk, but Shamudra is the first name. So when okay. I when you see it in an email, you'll see S-A-M-U-D-R-A. -A. Um, but having grown up in different countries and speaking to so many hundreds of people, I make mistakes in, in pronouncing, say, for example, oh, so Andre. I, I see a lot of messages from yourself in the chat. So I, now I link to the messages from with the, well, the video I'm seeing. So yeah, thank, I know. I, yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, I think, I mean, I hope I don't uh, overflow your mailbox so you no, can, no, you no, feel no. free to delete some of them, okay? Because just to reduce no, no. your mailbox <laughs> count. Uh, no, it's fine. No, it's yesterday when that crash happened or that thing happened, uh, I was crying because all my work is on the computer and if the computer doesn't want to boot and there is no mouse action, think about a start a Windows machine without a start button. Oh, that's not great. <laughs> at at uh, what eleven o'clock at night? Who who do I who do I yell at? My wife actually works for Microsoft. That's a joke. That's not that's not a joke. That's a joke. She's, you she's don't want to do that. She's a senior <laughs> exec. I mean, she was like, "Well, it should all work." Like, yeah, but you push the update. I mean, and then if you're doing uh, development of an FPGA, um, and you're doing coding and something doesn't work, what are you going to do? You're going to you know, it's a development tool, right? Okay. That was enough mm -hmm. excitement for last night until this morning. I'm better now. Andre, Andre, did I get your link right in the chat? That's the. Oh, let me see. I'm from Monday. Yeah, that's the one. 
Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's the main. That's the main one where I um, see Andre's there, work. Uh, so we uh, should all we should yeah. all get familiar with this particular uh, body of work to make sure that we're supporting it and integrating it. The main. I think one of the main wins here is the polyphase filter bank is seems to be. Is it, um, um, it, 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 it? Did you design a um, uh, using uh, Xilinx Vivado or Vitis? Uh, is it code based or is it graphical uh, model based so that we have actually a outline of the uh, uh, Xilinx, um, sorry, RTL? Uh, my question is that I'm used to the newer versions of Xilinx and everything. I'm not, uh, mm -hmm. I don't really like the old 2014, 2013 version of uh, whatever Xilinx had in those ancient times, but I kind of like okay. to start with a little uh, fancy block diagram. And then I work from there and I, and I, and I merge code into it and I create my own block diagrams. Uh, so the encoder is, uh, is, go is gonna be a one block in a, in a block diagram. Um, yeah, you just instantiate and configure and connect the interfaces. Okay. And, there is and, a there is a wrapper that uh, right right should have the attributes uh, defining say axi memory map and uh, stream and things like that. So the GUI can uh, yeah, identify. Would you would you say that your code is? Um, mature enough at this point? Do you feel it's mature enough that we could encapsulate it and then uh, statically define somewhere the the signal names so that we don't, even if you change the underlying code, we can actually depend upon the module to other sections, just because if we start integrating and then you change things at the lowest level, then we are gonna have to change things back at the highest system level. I mean, because if there's a code review yeah. board, then we will get into problems like, well, which version are we working with? Uh, that's just what I'm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's what we're what we're getting, what we should be doing in this next. Yeah, uh, like interface phase. control document it, section for every module, so to speak. Or what are the signals exposed, right? Yeah. No, this yeah, this particular repository is at the very top level. Um, so it's RTL components, and it's for the transmission of DBBS2. Okay. And there's an, a lot going on here, and there's a lot that we need to use and also integrate with the work that other people are doing. So our, our job is to figure out what we right. have and how to get it glued together correctly and see if there is any overlap so, so far. So, uh, support, supporting everybody's work, but also yeah. making a, a coherent uh, system. So, so would documentation guy uh, have a job like me? Like I could do a bit of documentation and organize all of that into uh, some kind of a yeah. sta yes. standards document? What do, what do we call it? Just a just well, a spec, I mean, specification document, right? Yeah, we're we're complying with a, a published standard, so DBBS two. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about the our standard. particular yeah, our, code. our particular implementation needs needs um, and the documentation, for example, in Andre's um, repository is excellent. Okay. So it's it's go to the repository, check it out, figure out what we have, and. We, we need to start integrating these large glaciers together. Yeah. You know, these big icebergs need to come together into a into a powerful glacier. So there is definitely a need here for some good technical writing um, okay. and some questioning back and forth. So the answer is yes, but we're starting out with some very high quality work from from Andre and Thomas and okay. Anshul. Okay, so I, I, I mean, if there's a option for, if nobody's gonna do it, I, I could uh, take a first stab at organizing the writing of it, the technical part, technical writing part, uh, collecting yeah, it into a document. You've got excellent writing to start with. So there's- okay. There's good stuff here. I I think we need to narrate and figure out what we need to review. And my my goal, I mean, that's a that is a, a, a something that we must do. The thing that I can probably help with um, is to make it work all over the air uh, as quickly as possible. So that's that's kind of my goal is to get this stuff up and running in the lab. That's a little messier job, <laughs> really, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that needs to happen in, in parallel. And I think that those two things feed each other. Like if we find out that there's something that doesn't work over the air, or if I have such significant problems getting something to work, then you know there may be more or less writing, more or less coding that needs to be done in any particular spot. So that's, that's sort of where we need to go next is to, is to do this sort of, sort of work. 
Andre, mm -hmm. is there anything that you need? Is there anything that's stopping you from, from doing anything? Mm, no, not really. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's let's give Anshul a a shot yeah. here at um I know it says what did I accomplish last week, but this is the initial stand up. So um yeah. you know, looking in the past, looking in the future, and then what's blocking you. Yeah, so uh, in the past, I worked on PL framing part. So that code has been merged. Now in, it's in DVB FPGA. Uh, in most recent past, uh, for, for past three, four weeks, I was trying to finalize the design for GSA encoder, how the interfaces will work, whether it will be IP or M17. So that's all done. Now I've started with the implementation of GSA encoder. Uh, I was facing some obstacles or issues related to how, how it will interface with the PS part. Today, I had a discussion with Suoto, and it's all clear now. So we'll proceed with uh, implementation. That's all. Thank you. Yep. OK, good. cool. All right, so Shamandra, you're sort of kind of oriented. I know this is very quick. Uh, meeting very fast, sort of, yeah. uh, you know, forward, I, I, past I, looking, I, forward I, looking. I, I, I like the agile um, uh, uh, framework because uh, I do design sprints when I am busy on something. I just get it done and then I forget about it until like next do it, which it, it gives me time, some time to think about things in between. Right. So um, in terms of contribution, well, in terms of what I was doing, I was uh, not doing anything for this track, but I'd like to suggest that I begin to uh, collect documentation of these two uh, sections, um, draw it out, um, you know, have a piece of paper circulated for uh, in review, so that if that is the architecture that's been developed, I'd like to just document that. That will give me an idea of like where uh, the code blocks are, so code segments are. I have a, I have a Zinc uh, development board nearby connected to a Unix machine uh, just, you know, across the room which is actually live. I mean, I can actually do things in Zinc, uh, you know, 7010, single core processor, et cetera, et cetera, PSPL and everything. So if there is a chance that without actually generating an RF, uh, we have a situation where we just want to test some code, uh, then at least uh, I could compile it, see if it works and oh, complain. Good. Okay. And, and it, yeah. it will, no, it will let's, be a backup, yeah. No, let's do that. We'll add you to the, to the resources because the sort of, uh, verification and validation that has to happen and in order to have a successful over the air test uh, or functional system then there's a lot that has to happen before that well then then i'd like to just suggest that something that i did got a lot of uh, uh, kudos from the nasa community when i delivered the flight hardware several times over i for my own testing on my solo self i created a bunch of uh, useful utility applications running on microprocessors, which would, would be now running on FPGA. So your gadgets and widgets that you guys as developers or everybody as developers do, I mean, they still need testing. We need to run them on, you know, section by section by, you know. So the kind of the, it's, I'm not talking about UVM or methodology or testing. I'm talking about actual manual turning on something and sending a test carrier or so, turning on something and sending a, a test frame or something. Those kind of utility programs I could start to, code and and see if I can get it to wake up, do things, send a signal out. You know, the best thing is a sine wave, for, for example. Uh, okay. I just yeah, don't know what level good. of testing you've already implemented. I'd like to pursue that. If yeah, I think we're we're using we're gonna we're going to be determining that very quickly. So there's a variety. Uh, I know Thomas has done some test benches and I know Andre is very fully aware of the requirements for testing. So the, yeah. we're very extremely fortunate in that the volunteers are professionals that have a lot of experience here. So yeah. unlike a lot of situations in, in maybe volunteer groups or in, or in, in some uh, organizations, you're not going to have to convince people of the value of testing and and the types of testing and philosophies of testing. So yeah, you're going to get a you're going to get an enthusiastic uh, you know um, bunch, bunch of people here. I, I guess just a question is the is there an OS involved or not? There is not an OS involved at the stage. Yeah, yeah, there is a uh, we are using um, uh, there is one OS provided by analog devices that got. Uh, that we got along when we bought the card. So that's running in the remote lab. So that's the OS we are using. Right okay. now it has not been customized, but yeah, uh, I will be pushing some firmware driver as and when needed. 
Okay, so could we have a UI, a remote UI to interface to the uh, um, lower level? That might be useful so that we can actually have a menu based thing that, you know, turn on, turn off and, and uh, beep, beep and all that just without actually doing anything hardware wise. I do think there is a UI. Um, I will... Um... Well, I, I could write it. I mean, I want that's the challenge. I want to do a PSPL based UI so we can actually be the, uh, um, you know, in, in uh, built in test equipment. We'd be the BITE, B I T E. We'd implement the B I T E. That's my project. Go give me the project and I'll go do it. Would that be okay, uh, Anshul? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, so wherever you are in the world, you can test it. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, global testing. We may, you may even license it to people, they might just take it. Everybody wants testing. They do. It's kind of underserved. And they forget to test before they fly, as in we're looking <laughs> at your Boeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We well, we see it from top to bottom. So that's okay, that we that we're aware of and and motivated to do. Okay. okay. Well, anyway, I, I'd like no, to read uh, later on what kind of testing is needed, so we can make a list and we can start to drill down from there. So if I can take some of that uh, uh, okay. needed things and then work backwards, I can come up with a frame. Great. Framework. Okay, so the the repository that we've talked about the most today is on ground, phase four ground, DVB, FPGA, and Anshul has said that all have the contributions are merged. The documentation there is good. So what I'm going to do over the next week is focus on trying to stumble through. It will probably I'll ask lots of embarrassing, dumb questions to try to get this up and running here in the lab, uh, and and attempt to to use it over the air. So that'll be one of the, the highest priorities moving forward uh, for me. So here at your service to be uh, lab tech two, you know, uh, we have lab tech one handling the battery stuff. Um, and that's, that's what I'll be up to, uh, to get some, some practical traction on, on the code. Yeah, Michelle, that, that, that's very valuable. Uh, as we discussed in the last meeting, it will be uh, parallelly uh, doing this task will help us for our August demo. So yeah. Oh, where where is the you. demo, please? Where is the demo going to happen at Ham Conference or? Somewhere? It's a yeah, it's called Ham Expo, and it's a okay. virtual event in mid-August. Mm -hmm. uh, and okay. I'll send out a lot more about it. I've sure, been starting sure. to to talk about it more. Today is okay. actually the deadline for uh, registering for a presentation for a technical presentation. So. Okay. Anybody that wants to present anything about this work, that's a really great place. So to you're not going to go it. for the. Um, satellite sorry the small set show in Logan, utah i i don't know if they're gonna do an in-person show or no not. because they usually have i mean i that's where i got my claim to yeah. fame i i actually ran on batteries accidentally because i left the adapter back home yes like that, that's stupid but that's so, that got me on the world map yeah the answer is is yes i think that we will have a demonstration and and show up at the small sat conference uh as soon as we have uh working hardware and if it if it should be done earlier, if that's a a, a place uh, that we should, should well, it's show. an academic institution sponsor, so you can get a free uh, poster session. But what I'm yeah. trying to say is that they are space mission people, managers of scouting yeah, we know. for technology. Uh, so, no, we're so, yeah. we're yeah. we're all pretty familiar with the conference. It's just that right. out of out of the schedule for the year and out of the amount of money yeah, that the people COVID have to and travel stuff, right. exactly. and COVID and everything. So we don't have any plans to 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 go there yet. In fact, the schedule is because of COVID got pretty much wiped out. Um, yeah. The places yeah, yeah. that we actively participate in are places like, uh, we've gone to Hamcation a lot and it's been a very good event for us. Uh, Hamvention, not so much. DEF CON has been really good. Okay. Uh, Burning Man's been great. Um, and the small sat conferences in the past have been good. The one in DC has been very good. Um, uh, we were supposed to go to Ham Fair in Tokyo, which is the largest amateur radio event in the world okay. and has a okay. lot of satellite and amateur satellite. Uh, Friedrichshafen was on the list. So we're starting over from scratch, really, and taking a new look at where the world is. New. The world is new. Everything is new. So yeah, it kind of is. OK, okay well, so, hey, we're only six minutes over the goal here. Uh, right. but that's Thank pretty you. good. And I will I'll go ahead and close it and I will we'll publish uh, notes and summary and all that sort of thing. And we'll do it again next week. And I'll be uh, I'll be on Slack. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, team. Okay. Bye bye. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. See you bye. soon. Bye bye.